Hey guys, it's me, Gadget Guy 2350 here. Um, one of my uh, viewers um, requested a video on how to program my H2000s by uh, uh, Motorola. So what what you're going to need is obviously your radio with an antenna and a charged, fully charged and working battery. Um, and you're also going to need an older computer. This one is an old HP, I forget what model, but it has a, I actually installed XP on it, Windows XP. Mo most ha ham rads will, or ham operators, I don't know what the heck they call them, but basically they would, uh, they always say, oh, you need a 95, 98 PC or DOS or something like that, and a, you need a rib box too, but in reality, I don't, I'm going to explain that for me, in my opinion, I have not had any problems using Windows XP on a, quite a modern-ish PC, as well as not even requiring a rib. Because this is actually a ribless cable, so I do not need the rib interface box. Which a lot of people say, oh no, stay away from ribless cables. But I've actually never had a problem with this cable. It's never ever acted up funny for me once. I guess I just got it from a good brand, which is from Sundeli, or S-U-N-D-E-L-Y off of eBay. They make really nice ribless cables. I have never had a problem with them. Um, but you may be wondering, like, uh, since it's ribless cable, like, uh, do they make them USB? I, I still say stay away from USB unless you know, like, a brand that works for you. But I'd say stay away from USB. But it needs a serial port. This is a serial port cable. But your computer has to have a serial port, such as this port right there. That blue port, that's your serial port. That's where your, uh, cable is going to plug into. You make sure that it's also a dedicated serial port, not just a USB serial device. It has to be a dedicated header on the motherboard. Like, you know, solder directly into it and not some USB to serial port thing. It has to be um, genuine serial port straight up to the motherboard. Sorry about the camera, I just had to screw it in so it wouldn't come out and corrupt my radio. But uh, I guess we should get started. So what we're going to do is that for me, I have a DOS emulator. Most other emula No other DOS emulators work very well for programming 90s radio gear, but DOSBox works really well. I've already configured it to automatically launch my software. Uh, if you guys wonder where, where uh, you guys can get software and stuff like that, just... Um, let me know because I can give you some links to um, a website. But anyway, it says uh, press in any key to continue. We're going to continue here. So we have a menu screen. Like, okay, what do we do here? Um, how do we get our information from our radio? First of all, we have to connect our radio to the cable, which is right here. This is our cable. It goes on to this right here. What we're going to do is that we are going to attach our... Programming cable, sorry for the bad camera work, I'm doing this one-handed. We're going to attach a programming cable like that to the side. What we're going to have to do is, like, oh, it might not work because, hold on a minute, our radio's not on. Got to turn on our radio. Sorry about the squelch. It's because this room has, like, a bunch of computers in here, and it's... And I have two Minecraft servers. I'm not giving out the IP ever. So please just don't bombard me with questions. Just don't, please. I just, no. No, thank you. Um, but other than that, uh, we turned on our radio. We connected it to our computer. Okay, now we have the screen. What do we do? Um, what we do is that we get to uh, get, save, clone. So we hit F3. Now, we want to hit F2 to read data from radio. Now, it will say reading code plug. And the radio is green. And it's reading our code plug, which is our frequencies and all of our settings. Now, we want to hit the escape key once. Now, we need to go to F4 or hit F4, which is change view radio code plug data or more or less settings, which is your frequencies, your MVC 1200, etc. So, let's say we want to program a frequency in here. Okay, let's. so what we need to do is that we have to hit F4, channel configuration. Boom, we hit F4. So, this will give us our frequencies. These are all my frequencies, just my whole state does not use 400 megahertz, so please don't go ratting on me saying, like, oh, those are illegal frequencies, blah, 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 because no one in my area ever uses 400, not even the power and light company, so I'm not messing with anything at all. So, yeah. Um, so this is channel one that we're on right now, which is 466 to 9000. Let's say we want to program, let's say channel eight, let's so... We can just type in 08 
hit enter, it'll take a minute, but then that'll bring us to channel 8, which is programmed. So you'll want to um, program that if it says no. You want to hit yes. So to scroll down our options, we want to hit the enter key because our enter is like our shift key. So it's like enter, enter, etc. I can choose chalk around, MDC 1200 ID. I don't have it enabled because I just don't want it enabled. What is channel 8? Channel 8 is my uh, inner operations channel for my own gear. Not a state, and like, if you notice a sticker, it kind of says some uh, stuff like that, but those are my my uh, stickers. This I'm not in any other, well, whatever, you guys know what I mean. It's not like I'm putting illegal frequencies in this. These are my frequencies and my labels, so. But yeah, let's say I want to, um, what is it? I don't know, but basically this is what I have programmed. I program the frequency which you just type it in 462.5500 on your keyboard and it should automatically configure and then you want to hit it again and then you have to type the same thing in for the receive and transmit I'm talking around just means that there's no PTT ID or anything like that but um, let's say you are using your radio as a scanner what you want to do for every channel you want to hit RX only or receive only you want to always have that enabled but you can use PTT ID which is uh, which is your MDC 1200, uh, ATIS, uh, GE Star, all that different stuff. Those are all signaling formats. Basically, when you enable it, you just hit your up arrow, and it'll turn to enabled. And basically, what what you can do is that is you can like do it like for end of transmission, beginning of transmission, or both. I always have it in, uh, disabled because that's just my preference. But yeah, here you can also change your TPL, DPL, or private line tones, which I have mine at 67 hertz. I'm gonna go back there, but basically you can do TPL, DPL, and uh, Quick Call 2. Actually, you can also do. You can also use these as fire pagers, which is Quick Call 2. Um, so let's say you programmed everything you wanted to be in there, but I know someone's gonna ask, like, "Hey, what about NBC 1200? Blah 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 blah. Um, what do you want to do for um, NBC 1200? Is that you'd want to go back to your uh, uh, menu where it says Radio Wide, and which is basically F4, then you hit." Um, F3 for radio configuration. Then what you want to do is go to signaling options, which is F7. So you click F7. Then it'll say quick call 2, which is your paging functionality, MDC, star, ATIS, single tone, DTMF. This radio does not have a DTMF pad, so you do not want to mess with DTMF. But I'm going to do MDC, so let's say I'm going to hit um, F3 for MDC. But now I can choose between 1200. Well, it, it always says this because it's just it just does that. Well, yeah, basically, um, you can do MDC 1200, ATIS, and GE Star. With uh, um, ATIS, uh, I'm sorry, I mean GE Star, you can go up to 400 baud or 600. I'm trying to remember, 600 or 800. I don't know. But I don't want to mess with it since I have, I have some stuff programmed in here for my use and I don't want to lose it. But yeah, basically, um, you can uh, choose, choose between those three. Well, which is basically uh, MEC 1200, ATIS, and GE Star, but I think there's also DTMF too. I'm not quite sure. It might not be on this. But yeah, you can choose the uh, ID, which is your signaling enabled, um, which D key means like when I right when I release the button from transmitting, it will uh, do my ID, or if I, or I can do key up, which just means like uh, when I straight when I hit the button to transmit, it will do my ID, or key up and D key, which means like when I transmit. It, it beeps then when I let go of the transmit it beeps as well but uh, if you have it on key up it's really nice to have the side tone the PTT side tone enabled which will basically have like a, um, a tone when you hold down the button so you know when to exactly talk so you're not completely cut off which is a uh, quite a useful feature especially if you are doing beginning a transmission but um Emergency knowledge is nice because if you do have a dispatch console like a Centricom or a Comtegra, you actually can, um, or even a GM300 mobile radio set up as a console, you can uh, basically allow these radios to receive an emergency ID status. Child mine enable just for future proofing. But yeah, with the emergency, you can choose transmit light, alert, acknowledge. You always want your acknowledge because that's important so the radio knows or that you know if you press the emergency button that the console heard it. Uh, silent emergency just means like when you press the button, it doesn't may make a beep or anything like that, like like it would normally do, which would be the emergency side tone. But basically, it just uh, activates the uh, emergency button as a silent alarm, similar to what a bank has. 
a silent emergency with voice means like the dispatcher can basically um, remotely hear what's going on without you having to transmit, is what my knowledge is. But yeah, basically that's your MDC settings and but okay, you uh, did what you wanted to do. How about we want to program? What we want to go to is, um, let me find it again, is um, F3. Then see where it says uh, programming, program data into radio, you want to hit F8. So let's say we hit F8, it's a warning, programming will replace your original um, settings. So I'm going to hit F8, well, let's program. Might take a minute, but it will say writing code plug. That's good. And our radio turned green, so that means it is loading our settings. Or it programmed it, basically. It beeped. It also says radio code plug programming. Okay, hooray. So our radio is good. So we can move our cable and we can go to channel one, which is what I have at 466.9000 on my realistic Pro 2028 um, scanner. It's non 800 megahertz nor trunking, strictly analog. But I can go ahead and transmit. But uh, you might be wondering what the silent emergency does. So if I press down the emergency button right here, that's my emergency ID. And it'll keep doing that until the dispatcher um, acknowledges the radio using the dispatch console. So I will um, stop it from doing that because you can't really stop it. So I have to turn the radio back on. But yeah, that's basically it. And yeah, that's how you program an H2000. If you have any other questions or need help, I can help you as well. I can send you some links. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed.